Let's talk about conditional statements. Conditional statements let us perform actions based on if a condition is met. We use them to help direct the behavior of our programs. In fact, we actually use conditional statements in our everyday lives. Have you ever gone to a cafe but didn't really know what you wanted to order? You've probably narrowed down what you want kind of like this. Do I want something refreshing or something thick? Uh, if I want something refreshing, I guess I could get something like an iced coffee or an iced tea. I guess I'll get some tea, but what flavor do I want? Oh god, there's so many flavors to choose from. Am I feeling a little adventurous? Or should I pick something safe? Something tart? Uh, maybe something citrusy? Maybe strawberry? But can I even afford this? What am I doing with my life? Do my parents even love me? Did I leave the oven on? Well, to help our indecisive mind figure out what we want, we can use something called a flowchart. Flowcharts help us plan and visualize the different outcomes in our program. Looking back at our cafe scene, we can use a flowchart to figure out what we want to get. First, we ask ourselves, do we want something refreshing? If not, do we want something thick? If we do, then we'll get a smoothie. But if not, we'll just not get anything at all and go home. But if we choose to get a refreshing drink, then we ask ourselves, do we want tea? And if not, then we'll get a nice coffee. But if I do want tea, then do I want raspberry? If we do, then great, we'll get raspberry. But if not, we'll just get some kiwi flavored tea instead. In programming, you can represent these decisions with what's known as an if statement. An if statement is a conditional statement where if the condition is met, then an action happens. So, if I'm in the mood for something refreshing, then I'll order a fruity drink. Now that we have an idea of what an if statement is, let's see how we go about writing one. As a disclaimer, even though writing an if statement is pretty much the same in most modern languages, it's important to check your specific language to make sure you didn't miss anything. In this case, we're using the language Java. But this would also work for the languages C, C++, C Sharp, and JavaScript. Anyways, back to the video. We start an if statement by simply putting the word if at the beginning of two parentheses. Then, you would follow up with a condition. A condition is something that we check to see if it's true. And, if it is, the computer will execute whatever's inside our little curly brackets. Like, is 3 greater than 2? It is. So, it'll execute the code. And if it's not true, then the computer will just continue reading through your code and ignore whatever you wrote here between the brackets. Voila! What are some ways we can check our condition? I'm glad you asked, Kevin. The way we check to see if our condition is true is by using comparison operators. These comparison operators are exactly what you'd see in your elementary class. Sit down and shut up! <clears throat> we got the less than, the greater than, and well, you know the rest. And in programming, we write these symbols a little differently. Notice how equals to has two equal signs. This is because only using one equal sign means you're assigning values to a variable. So here, we're saying a is equal to three and b is equal to three. But when you use two equal signs, you're checking to see if the left side is equal to the right side. And if you want to check that something is not equal to something else, an exclamation point is a universal way in programming to represent the word not. So putting an exclamation point in front of an equal sign means not equal to. Technically, the exclamation point itself is kind of another operator, but we'll get to that in a moment. So now that we know how if statements and conditions work, we can look at an example now. So let's say a drink cost $4.95. I currently have $5.75. And I currently don't have a drink. But going into our conditional, since the money I do have is more than $4.95, now I can have a drink. But let's say you want to check for two conditions in the same if statement, like do I have enough money and do they have the flavor I want? In that case, you can combine conditions with what's known as a logical op operator. Logical operators are simply the words and, or, and not. The nice thing is, they work exactly how you would expect them to in plain English. So, if I want to check if two conditions are both true, we would use the word and, which is represented by two ampersands. You know, those little squiggly boys. 
So looking at this example, I want to check if I have more than 495 and that my favorite flavor is in stock. Since they are both true, the computer will run the code inside the if statement. But let's say we only have 350. 350 is less than 495, which makes this condition false. Even though they have the drink we want, and requires both conditions to be true to run the code. So, since we have one condition that failed, the computer will ignore what's inside of our if statement and continue on with our program. If we want to check to see if at least one of the conditions is true, we would use the OR operator, which is represented by two straight lines. So, if I have more than 495, or the cafe has the flavor I want in stock, I'll buy a drink. So only one condition needs to be true to execute the code. And if both fail, then the computer ignores the stuff inside and continues on with your program. And lastly, we can check if our condition is not true by using the NOT operator. As we mentioned earlier, the exclamation point is the universal way of representing the word NOT. So if we put the exclamation point in front of the condition, we can check that if our condition is not true. So. We know that if statements check if our conditions are true. Without the exclamation point, our if statement would check to see if our money is greater than or equal to 495, then do whatever's inside the curly braces. But let's say I only have 75 cents, and I want something to happen if I don't have enough money. If we put an exclamation point, now the if statement can check to see if our condition is not true, and then proceed to the code inside the curly braces. So in this case, if we don't have enough money, then our mood is set to sad. Anyway, that's it when it comes to if statements by themselves. To recap, if statements just check to see if something is true, then, if it is, it'll execute some code. But uh, what if you want something to happen if your if statement fails? Well, I'm glad you asked, Kevin. You would handle this with what's called an else statement. You attach this to the end of your if statement as a default action if your condition doesn't pass. Take a look. So, if we have more than 495, then, our mood is happy. Oh. Else, we'll be sad. Oh. But let's say you have a few different decisions to make. Like for example, Kevin here wants something fruity if it's available. But if it's not, then he'll get a smoothie. And if they're out of that too, he'll just get a water. Well, if we write this with three different if statements, look what happens. Fruity is available, so great, we can get that. But now our code continues and now we've also bought a smoothie, and we've also gotten a water since they're all available. Now, we've got all these drinks that we didn't want. To avoid this, we can combine if and else statements to make something called an else if statement. That way, if our first condition is met, in this case, we get something fruity, our code will stop there and we won't have to buy everything else. But if our condition doesn't succeed, then, it'll continue down the rest of the else if statements until one of them passes. So that's if statements in a nutshell. Now let's put all of this information together with a couple of examples. So this is Blub Jr. As Blubs get older, they get bigger. So we can give them size categories based on their age. Here, Blub Jr.'s age is 3. So looking at our first if statement, we see that if his age is less than or equal to 3, he'll be classified as a small Blub and the program will skip the other two conditions. But let's say he gets older and his age is now set to 12. Since 12 is greater than three, our first condition will fail and our program will move on to the second condition. Now, since Blub's age is between three and 15, our condition here will pass and now Blub is classified as a medium Blub. And finally, let's say Blub is all grown up at the age of 21. Since 21 is greater than three, our program will skip the first condition and move on to condition two. Looking at our condition here, we see that even though 21 is greater than three, it's not less than 15. And since our AND operator requires both conditions to be true, this condition will fail as well. Since neither of these conditions passed, we're left with our ELSE statement which will let us take care of any other age that isn't handled by the other two conditions, making this blub a big boy. Now here's a more complex example with an if statement inside of an if statement. We want to identify our mysterious blub. We first check if our color is white. It is. So we go inside our curly braces, but now we see there's another if statement nested inside our other one. Nested if statements help us get more specific with checking our data 
In this case, we can get more specific information about our mysterious blub. If they're a white female blub, then this blub is identified as Blubette. Hello. But if they're not, then it's identified as Mr. Blub. Hi. And if our mysterious blub isn't even white, then they're probably Kevin. That's it for today's video. We hope you've learned something, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll know when our next video comes out. Also, let us know of any topics that you would like us to cover next time. And we'll see you again in the next one. Say bye, Kevin. Bye. Bye.